Hello, it's the 27th of February 2021. So I took on this allotment in December last year. So I've had it about two and a half, three months now. It's 203 square meters. So out of an allotment, I need three things, okay? Low maintenance, productive, and enjoyable. So I'm going to show you some things you can do to your allotment or your growing space if you're growing at home or somewhere else that you can do to hopefully be able to achieve those things. So here I have a no dig bed. Now I've got ready bought compost on top of grass. There's no cardboard under it here or anything like that. And it's about six, seven, eight inches thick, something like that. I've got an edge around it of some curb stones which were actually left down this allotment when I took it on. So very grateful for that. And that stops the grass from encroaching onto the no dig bed. And I've chose to do no dig here because in general it's lower maintenance because there's less weeds and also the fact that I'm thinking about building soil quality and structure as time goes by. Now of course some of you may be saying well I don't have any compost or well rotted manure to initially start a no dig bed and that is a very valid point because at the end of the day that is what you need. So that will now take me on to my next point. Okay, so here I built some compost bins out of pallets. Now the pallets I got from builders, merchants and places like that, quite often they give them away for free. So that can be very handy indeed. Now when you're building compost bins, you want to try and make them about a cubic metre. So like a metre squared, that way you can get some greater heat in there, which can actually help to kill weed seeds. Now compost is a combination generally of green and brown, carbon to nitrogen. 50% of carbon to 50% nitrogen is one possible ratio. One that I prefer is 60% nitrogen to 40% carbon. I think that works very well. So down there, I've got some grass cuttings there. So they are green, they're a nitrogen, and there is some sawdust, and that is a brown, a carbon. And I'm gonna slowly mix the two together. I'm gonna to put some examples of browns and greens on the screen right now. So hopefully you can see those and get composting, okay? Even if it's a very small amount, really start building on it. Get hold of some nice grass clippings from your own garden or from other people if they're prepared to give them to you. Make sure that the grass area where it's been cut from hasn't been treated with anything like herbicides or anything like that. You want it natural, in my opinion, and start composting. So many things you can do and it will really help you in the future. Start looking at it as a long-term thing, okay? Don't try and get it all done in one day work on it and build on it and you'll be glad you built your soil quality. This area here, I've placed some weed proof membrane down. Now this allows water to go through so I ended up with a flood down here. Once again, I've got some curb stones around the edge to mark the boundary as well. And what I've done is put it down using curb stones here to stop it blowing away. And I've also, places like this, I've put some tent pegs down to keep it close to the ground so once again, it does not blow away. Now on this area is actually bare soil because there was another membrane down on here when I took this allotment on. It was past its best, it had grass and weeds growing through it, so I removed it and put this down. When you put it down, make sure you put it down nice and tight, okay? And what this will do is stop the light getting to anything underneath, stop anything regrowing, and indeed hopefully kill anything that is growing underneath, whether it's weeds or grass, etc. You could put some manure underneath it to let that work in, but I haven't, and there's various options you can use with regards to this. So this is a weed proof membrane that I had left over from a job I did from someone. Now you can get organic ones, okay? I found a website, it's called Mulch Organic. So I'll put that link down below and I saw some membranes on there. I think it was made out of cornstarch. So that could be a, an option for you. Now, good thing about doing this, what it can do is it can cover up an area so you don't have to think about it too much. So you can work on other areas without this getting too much out of control. But also with doing this, what I'm going to be doing is cutting holes in it and growing plants in it. So I'm probably going to have things like squash, marrows, courgettes, maybe some melons and cucumbers growing in this area. So nice and low maintenance and in the holes where I cut them, I can also put some compost in to further enrich and create a lovely growing medium there. So this can be a very effective time saver and manageability thing to do. I built a raised bed here. Now this is full of some topsoil that I had. So some of you may remember the raised bed I had in my garden at home and I brought that, some of that soil down here. So there it is. And I've also built it out of gravel boards which were also part of that bed. So reusing materials. Now what you could consider doing is using a wood like cedar which is very slow to rot. Now my plan here is probably to eventually remove the 
raised bed here and gradually spread it across this area here. So you can see that this area is a bit of my dumping ground. You know, I need it to begin with whilst I get the allotment manageable. But what I can slowly do is start bringing it like this across. Now, one thing that I think many people do with regards to allotment here in gardening is try to do everything all in one go and you probably can't and you don't need to do that you want to slowly work at it you can see I'm slowly working across this allotment getting bits and bits productive at a time don't take it on all at once eat just a little bit of the cake and once eventually you'll end up eating all of the cake so slowly slowly work towards it and you will get there okay so with regards to composting some people can find it intimidating so one option, of course, is to use these containers such as this, otherwise known as Daleks, okay? And once again, your 50-50, 60-40 mix of carbon to nitrogen green to brown you can do and put some water in, make sure that uh, it's got enough water in order for it to decompose properly. And yeah, you can start off a composting in something like this. So in my opinion, it's, it's good to do some co composting other than no composting, even if it's not optimal. You know, you can start storing ingredients. You can start getting some grass clippings, some leaves, you know, even if you just dump them in a pile, some manure and leave it for a later date, as long as it doesn't look too unsightly, of course, you don't annoy your allotment neighbors, so to speak, but to, you know, start thinking of the future and planning ahead and you can slowly start turning your allotment or your garden, your growing space into how you want it. But the, the key here is to have the necessary ingredients to be able to do that. So here I have a golden gauge tree. I'm so grateful that this is on the allotment here. So I'm going to prune this in May. Now this is a part of a permaculture area. I've got a currant bush here, not sure whether it's a red, white or black currant, we'll find out. And what I'm doing is leaving this a little bit rough down here, so to speak. It's good for insects as well. And what I can do is strim it sort of every now and then and so it doesn't get too much out of hand. So permaculture area where I'm going to hopefully get some lovely crops and what I can then do is just leave this bit to do its thing whilst I work on other areas. So you may wish to consider a permaculture area in your allotment. So here you can see some raised beds. Now these were already on the allotment when I took it on and utilising things that are already there can be very helpful indeed and can potentially save you time. So yes, some of you may be saying, well Dan, you put this wood chip down in between but it's taking up lots of growing space. And yes, it indeed is, but the point I'm um, well implementing here basically is one step at a time okay so what I'm going to eventually do is to remove these raised beds and turn this into one big growing area all the way back to just in front of where I've got the grapes here so that'll be very effective so once again this further reinforces the composting idea and get your growing matter going now because when later in the year when you may wish to extend your beds enrich existing ones you'll then have the matter the compost to work with hopefully anyway so eventually a nice big bed there and think of the extra space but whilst I'm waiting for that I've kept it manageable by keeping it like this and this is not going to get out of control very easily, so there it is. Consider implementing things that are already there in order to help you. Sheds. Now, sheds can be brilliant for storage, etc., and they can also have problems as well. So, fixed the shed here, had to put some felt back on. There was a hole in it, it was leaking. That's no big deal. But of course, so this is about six by four feet. So that's 24 square feet here of growing space that I could use if this shed wasn't here. Now, you don't have to have a shed on your allotment or in your garden. They can be handy, but if this shed wasn't already here, I would not put another one down here because of the space it takes up. And I'm not convinced for me that they are that useful. So yes, there is some things I'm storing in here, many of which are already here. And I've got a few things in there, but I could find a way around that. And I certainly wouldn't advise anyone to keep anything in an allotment shed that they wouldn't mind being stolen. I mean, I know that's a very negative way of thinking, but um, even if your allotment is known to be theft free, it only takes once, doesn't it? So if you've got your power tool in here and someone runs off with it, you know that's a very sad and frustrating thing so sheds can be good you don't need to have one though if you're not going to store much down there so think about the amount of space a shed takes up particularly if you've got a small garden small allotment or growing space you may not even need to have one 
So get plenty in your allotment that does well in your area, okay? So for example, here in the southeast, we tend to get some of the warmest and longest summers by UK standards, but we can also get some of the driest. So I've got grapes here. Now these are taken from existing vines. They're cuttings, I took them myself. Now grapes do very well here. They send down deep roots, okay, in order to find water. And grapes, they like well-draining soil, okay? But they do incredibly well here. If you're living in a wetter area, you may wish to look at something that thrives in a wetter climate. So really, really think, ask people, hopefully you've got a little bit of personal experience that you can, you know, draw from, which grows well in your area. But if you haven't, then you, you can't help that. So reading, research, talking to people, learning, and consider putting in things that will thrive where you are. And this will help to build confidence, help to build an overall positive allotment or growing experience. And I think that's very important. So when you get an allotment, sometimes you've got, you know, bits of rubbish or indeed things that certainly are not, come here, things that certainly are not rubbish laying around. So you might be able to utilise them. Now, with things that truly are rubbish, sometimes allotments have skips, you know, funded out of people's uh, rents. So that can be very useful. So maybe there's a skip service on site once or twice a year, something like that. So look into that if you've got, you know, ways of getting rid of rubbish because uh, it can sometimes be overpowering. But, you know, once again, one step at a time, nice and slowly, and you can get it round. There's some allotment manageability hints and tips and suggestions for you. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share, subscribe. See you in the next video.